Yes, we can hear you. Right. So um, let's start and uh, start with uh, seeing who's here from the team. So um, I say I see um, Wendwam, Andre, Andres, Craig, John, Michael, Nurani, and Paul. Rest of attendance. So um, let's start first. Start with uh, confirming the agenda as usual. And um, so, is it possible to show the um, the agenda here on the screen? If not, uh, meanwhile, while we're waiting for um, the screen to uh, pop up, um, I'll, I'll read out um, the agenda from the, what I sent from the mailing list. So um, the first thing on the agenda is um, election of the vice chair. And this part will be chaired by uh, Michael as non-voting member. Um, Agenda item number three will be actions review. So we have uh, a couple of uh, actions to review from the last time, including the um, the confirming the status of FAQ, the slides, message to ICG about the um, CWG uh, stewardship, um, share future steps with the community. And the last action we need to confirm is uh, to see with um, to confirm with NRO about RIR official response. And um, fourth on the agenda is a couple of updates um, to confirm if there are updates from the ICG, RIR communities, CWG stewardship from um, IETF, and. Um, this time I have the update related to GAL, the government accountability, the US government accountability office. Um, I realize I, I, did, I didn't do the numbering correct. Um, the fifth on the agenda is uh, confirmed status the next steps uh, related to the SLA, the review committee, um, as well as um, on the community engagement, engagement with the RIRs, and um, also on the intellectual property rights related issue. And lastly, we'd like to uh, confirm the schedule for the next meeting. So, uh, is there anything else that, that people would like to add on the agenda? I somehow seem to be lost to how I, sh I can get back to the chat room. And um, did I just drop out from the, um, from, um, the WebEx? Are people still able to hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, really? Okay. Um, now I, I can't get back to the place where um, I see the chat and things. So sorry, I'm not able to see hands. Um, well, um, hmm. would somebody able to tell me if there are any hands being up? If not. I'd like to uh, move to the first thing on the agenda, and I'd like to request Michael to take place, take, take over this part. Okay, can everybody hear me? Yep. Okay. Uh, well, thank you, Zumi, and thank you. Uh, good to see everybody on here. Um, hopefully this will be very quick, but uh, as I understand it right now, we have a nomination for Narani um, with regard to uh, filling the role that uh, is vacated by Alan in the vice chair role. Uh, one quick thing, does anybody else have any other nominations um, that they would like for us to consider? 
Okay. If there's if there are no other nominations, um, I don't know. Zumi, the one question I have for you: Did you want to go through and just record everybody's vote on this uh, particular item? It probably makes sense to do so, but considering there's no other nomination, I guess we could also do it by affirmation too. I think I leave it to you on um, including the process. I think that's better for um, the fairness because I'm a voting member. Okay. All right. Well. Um, then I guess just to be to uh, recognize everybody's um, you know vote here, the ones, our voting members that are here, uh, just for the record, I would say that um, we have a nomination uh, for Narani to be a vice chair, and uh, if we could just go through, I guess we'll go through each voting member here. I guess um, that way everybody could cast their vote. I'm not sure how many voting members we have right on right now. I know we have the non-voting members on here. Um, let me look here on the list. Okay. So why don't we just go through down the list if we have um, the vote from Andre. Okay. All right, we have Andre is yes. And then next to Izumi, we have you now next. And then Wenva? Yeah, I, I support. All right, and Narani? Abstain. Okay. So based on that, um, we have all the votes in favor of Narani fulfilling the vice chair. You forgot John, oh, <laughs> but I John. say yes. There you are, sir. I say yes. I think I already knew your vote, so. <laughs> yeah, I think you did. Um, all right, so we have we have everybody on the voting members uh, that are on the call right now. So I would say that then Narani has been elected for uh, the vice chair to fulfill the role. So great job. That was um, smooth and easy. And uh, congratulations, Narani. And um, great to have you as the our new vice chair. And um, so very happy to, to work with you. Um, um, I don't know if you want to say a, a word or two or running. I'd like to thank my mum. Uh, no, uh, on a more serious note, thank you very much. I really appreciate the, the, the support uh, given by all of you and the work and encourage. Um, and I will do my very best, and I feel confident working with Izumi and the fantastic work she's done so far that we'll, uh, we'll uh, manage this very last part of the process, especially with the rest of you all. So I won't say any more than that. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, yep. Uh, congratulations, uh, Nirani. And um, so, shall we move on to the next on the agenda? Um, so, actions review. So, notes from the last meeting. Um, from the last time I saw the presenting website, um, I don't recall having their notes uh, being posted up, but perhaps there's updates in there. Would somebody from the NRO Secretariat to able to pop on? Yeah, I guess you don't see the chat room, but I can see that Loriana has said uh, they've been posted now. Okay, great, thanks. Um, and the status on the FAQ and the Chris slides, um, would her man be able to help us with the latest status? Or perhaps uh, her man is uh, trying to like um, help uh, Alan John. So maybe we can uh, skip this part. And um, Alan is still not joining, so skip work we see as well. Um, share future steps with the community, um, so 3D. This is the part that um, from the last call, um, we confirmed what we discussed at a Phoenix 39 meeting, uh, where uh, we actually confirmed the future steps um, 
and how we share the, um, the implementation status um, and in the future RIR meetings. And I think this was the action item on my side. But um, because I've been um, hearing the update that NRO is preparing this, um, this report from APNIC 39, um, and I thought that it may be uh, better to wait uh, until this is ready. So uh, I have kept this uh, on hold, and the, the latest uh, status that I'm aware of is that uh, this will be posted up uh, on NRO website on Wednesday. So um, I'll wait for that, but if no um, update is made related to this um, after the close of business uh, hour on Wednesday, I'll just um, go ahead with um, doing the report myself on the um, global IANA list uh, because I really want to share the, the, the expected future steps before the coming airing meeting uh, next week. Um, so I don't know uh, if her man uh, you managed to hear um, the part of the um, the update that I did related to Action 3D, and if there's anything else that you'd like to add from your side on the status of um, posting the, the future steps on the implementation of preparing implementation, and um, the, the understanding that that I have is that. Um, it's, it is to be posted on the NRO website. Hi, Sumi. Can you hear me? Yep. Hello? Uh, yeah, I can hear you, man. Yeah. No, I just, I just, I was checking. Sorry. Um, uh, no, I have nothing to add to that. Uh, I will check with you after this call, so the action be implemented. Okay, so um, is it likely to be uh, ready by uh, Wednesday, uh, Wednesday, the close of business hour today, or is it likely to take a little bit of more time? Because in that case, I think the initial idea was to have this ready and then uh, make the um, announcement in each of the RAR mailing lists. Um, that's what I've been um, informally been Hearing, but um, we, we might not want to wait for that and just to uh, go ahead with uh, giving the report um, on the next steps uh, this week before the Aaron meeting. So do, do you have a, a, an idea about when this will be ready the, on the NRO website? Uh, I think we can uh, skip the part of uh, asking the the RI the promotion, but uh, definitely they could be ready by by this week. So um, this week, like uh, maybe Friday then, or um... yes. Okay, so um, if um, if we we don't see. See this already by the end of um, um, business hour on um, my my turn on um, the JST. Then um, I I suggest that um, so I will report to the global um, I, I analyst what uh, happened at uh, APNIC 39 meeting and what was agreed as the next steps. And then maybe um whatever the agreed process within the NRO can follow up. I think um, it's not going to be conflicting. So um, I hope this uh, sounds okay um, with everybody and also for what was agreed by the NRO. Um, Isumi. Yes. A point of clarification, uh, and uh, maybe I was confused on what we, have, we were talking here. You are talking about the SLA development discussions in the different RIRs? Um, I'm talking about Agenda 3D, so um, sharing this, um, the future steps um, of the preparing the implementation. Okay. All right. So are you happy um, with... Um, with this uh, way forward? 
Yes, yes. Okay, great. So I'll wait for this to be ready um, uh, on the NL website uh, by the close of business this Friday. And if it's not, then I'll go ahead and I'll make the announcement. So that's the 3D. And uh, let's go back to uh, 3B. FAQ and the first two slides. Uh, do you have stage, the latest status for this, Uh, it, it, Yes, after two rounds of inputs, and I think we have uh, um, a version to be ready to be published. The last version of the FAQ was of the was sent to the list, and Alan uh, replied with a uh, a uh, couple of last minute feedback. Um, after the incorporation of this feedback, I think the FAQ should be ready uh, to, to, go on li to go live. And the slide deck also uh, has been received two rounds of feedback. So uh, I think both, both documents uh, could be ready to be published um, uh, COB today. Um, I just need confirmation from uh, Lagnik staff who has the master file of the FAQ if the last input from Alan has been incorporated. But if that is the case, I think the documents are ready and I will be circulating both documents in the list again, just for your record, uh, as I will go to publish those in the, in the NRO website. Great. Thank you very much, Ahaman, for coordinating this and also for the NRO um, staff who have been um, working on the FAQ and the CRISP uh, plans. So thanks very much. And uh, let's go to 3C. Um, so I think this is the action item for Alan on um, uh, sharing with the um, ICG that uh, we have actually made this request to the CJ Registership, um, the, the names group, uh, to share the their status that affects the numbers community. I see um, that um, Alan has already sent this um, to the ICG, but I wonder, Alan, if there has been any um, any feedback from the um, ICG. Is Alan on the call yet? I don't see his name. It's been running here. Alan just sent a mail, so it's saying that he's been trying for 25 minutes to connect, but his browser won't uh, load WebEx yet, so he's not on the call yet. Okay, thanks, Nirani. Um, I wonder if we are able to um, call him to have him join through the um, phone. Um, perhaps uh, somebody from the NRO secretary could to help him. So yes, I asked Alan for his number. Uh, I've already offered that option. I'm waiting for that information to what number to be called. Thanks very much. Um, so we'll skip uh, 3C and um, oh, let's go to 3E. So um, confirm with um, NLO about RIR's uh, official response. So this is uh, related to the future steps and uh, so uh, whether to whether um, whether that. Um, they actually are ready to state that they recognize the Chris team proposal and they, they're ready to uh, share the future steps, the future expected steps. And I think uh, from the last call, um, I think the action item was for the NRO Secretariat to confirm with NROEC whether they're ready to do this. Um, so, uh, Haman, would you be able to share the status on this? Uh, the action is still open, uh, Sumi. Understood. Come okay. With, come back with uh, status uh, through the mailing list. Okay. So I think we're done with the actions review, and uh, let's go to the update. Um, so skip uh, 4A ICG um, until Alan can join, and uh, 4B. Is there an update from any of the uh, regional um, um, communities, including um, the coming Aaron meeting? So let's start with Aaron region. Uh, Bill here. I'm not sure that we have anything very specific. Um, I think one thing that has been very much on <clears throat> our minds is the issue of uh, transparency and how to preserve the <clears throat> transparency, the, the principle that we've done really well with uh, all the way through to the end 
of the process all the way through the, the contracting and SLA negotiation and so forth. Um, but that's, you know, very much an ongoing conversation. Um, John, are you still on? Anything to add? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. I, I think uh, there has been nothing posted to our list. I, I've been posting our calls and minutes and summaries and everything, but there has been no comments back from uh, from our community, from the Aaron community. Um, I guess the only thing maybe to touch on, Bill and Mike, is that, uh, you know, Aaron 35 starts Monday, and we do have a one-hour uh, crisp panel discussion scheduled for, I think, like 11 a.m. West Coast time on Monday. I think our plans as of right now are to use the, the slides for discussion that uh, Herman has uh, presented or posted yeah. for us. Yeah, and also Kathy um, Handley has developed a Q&A. I posted a link uh, to the chat uh, of the, the meeting uh, uh, a few minutes ago with that. It was just updated to include at the end, the last paragraph, um, uh, links to the uh, two documents that Izumi forwarded to the list what, yesterday or the day before. Um, yeah. The I, I just wanted to make really clear that those were external legal advice um, that is being presented without comment by Aaron yet, right? We, leading up to this, this meeting next week, uh, we wanted to get it out there for people to think about so that there would be something to talk about at the meeting, but this is not Aaron policy or recommendation or anything like that. This is just some legal consultants looked at the ICANN governance structure and California state law and uh, came up with this suggestion, which we are now going to talk about. Okay, thank you very much. I think that this uh, web page looks like a very uh, useful reference, like um, for FAQ um, kind of questions that we might uh, get from the community. Um, and my understanding was that uh, in the RIR meetings after APNIC, we will be sharing the latest. Uh, Status of implementation, um, including the status of um, SLA. Um, I wonder if any of those will be all shared and discussed uh, in the Aaron meeting. Hey, Izumi, I, uh, this is John. Paul has his hand up. I don't think you can see that, but he does have his hand up. Oh, thanks, um, Paul. Uh, thanks very much, Izumi. Thank, thank you, John. Actually, I have the same question that, that Izumi was, was asking. She stole the question right out from underneath me. Um, what, I, I wanted to know if there was some insight that you guys from Aaron have on what is Aaron's approach in, in, in dealing with the community on the SLA and possibly kind of uh, taking a look at uh, what has been submitted by the Chris team on the 15th of January. Because if I look at APNIC and maybe the way that APNIC had approached their community, there was a little bit of a question to actually even taking a look at the principles that were agreed and defined and delivered on the 15th of January. Um, uh, you know, uh, from the right perspective, I think what, what, I, what I would like to know is that APNIC took a certain uh, stance on how they approached their community with this and also the SLAs and maybe the kind of feedback they wanted from their community. Is there, is there anything you can tell us about how Aaron's going to approach this? Because I, I, that would be really great to know. Thank you. This is Bill. Um, I think there's been <clears throat> an attempt to promote active discussion. I think in the Aaron region, the, the sort of the culture is, in every region is different. And I think the culture in the Aaron region tends to be, uh, you know, as long as business is getting taken care of, everybody kind of, stands back and is quiet and lets things proceed. And if anything looks to be going not the direction they want, people are very quick to step up and say so. So in the Aaron region, the lack of participation on a list that is widely subscribed to tends to mean that everybody is pretty copacetic with the direction things are going. Uh, people rarely chime in to say, yes, I agree, yes, I agree, yes, I agree. Um, so, uh, what I suspect will happen in our panel is that we will sort of make a presentation, we'll discuss the issues, we'll try and stir up conversation a bit. A few people who haven't been paying attention to the list will come up with 
questions and we'll answer them. And probably we're not going to get a lot of feedback that we haven't already seen. That's my my guess. Um, yeah, that's that, exactly what I thought too, Bill. Does that okay. answer the question, okay. or is that not going the direction you're looking for, Paul? No, that's perfect. Thank you very much. Thanks, Bill. Thanks. Because that was my that was kind of my understanding, and uh, you know we we still have yet to. Uh, bring forward what we're going to be discussing in right, but I imagine it will probably be along the same lines as what you've just described. So thank you. Thank you. I would be very surprised if the community came back with any significant change of direction or disapproval of what's already been done. Yeah. Thanks very much, Bill. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Paul, this is John. I, that, then, like I said, I, we're going to, we're going to use the slides, um, the crisp slides that are, and, uh, you know, it's got the SLA stuff on there, the principles and all that. So uh, hopefully we'll get some discussion out of that. But uh, right now, I think, like Bill said, the plan is just to present that and, and see what kind of discussion it generates. Um, thanks. Super. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you very much, um, uh, Bill and John. And um, I, I do have additional questions uh, related to this. So I understand that you will be sharing um, the the content of the proposal and uh, have discussions with the community, but uh, do we share any of the progress on the implementation? Because we have already submitted the proposal itself, so um, I think it's, it's good that we, we do the summary and do, do still do share the, the core point of the proposal, but um, are we going to share the, the status of um, implementation part? Michael, do you think you could answer that? Yes, I think that um, we'll at least give a status in terms of the implementation. Um, you know, there are certain things that are going on in the in the back scenes that I guess we will update as much as we can update. So, so there are still things that are being worked on, and uh, to the point that we can have things that are definite, we will um, absolutely update the community and and seek their comment on that, um, and then obviously any questions that may may arise from that. Yeah, and this is Johnny, and John Kern will be, I think, I, is part of the panel as well. It's me, Michael, and Bill are the main, but I think John Kern's gonna be up there with us on the panel, so, um, you know, I'm sure he won't hesitate to uh, chime in with whatever he knows that can be shared. Cool. Thank you very much. Um, so um, nice to know this. So, um, if there are any other notable updates from any of the RIA communities, so um, please um, maybe raise your hands on the chat, and um, would be interested to hear. And if there are no hands, then I'll take this as um, no further updates. Hands from Paul. Sorry, Jimmy. I just have one, one other, one, one more question um, as to where we're standing because I think this is very, very important for us. To, I mean, look. I mean, for Ripe, this doesn't doesn't happen sometime till you know uh, mid May, so we have a little bit of time. But what I would like to gauge is um, we have a couple people here on the CRISP team that are also involved with the drafting of the SLAs. And is there any update on when the first draft of the SLAs will be available? I think that that, I mean, that does kind of play into what we're going to be sharing with the communities, right? So, is, is somebody can somebody tell me when we when when that's going to happen? Very good point, Paul. Um, so I actually wanted to confirm this, and I, I put this on the agenda or six A. But I think it's good that uh, we can um, move to this um, SSA. So um, perhaps um, maybe people who are involved in uh, developing the SLA could uh, share the status. Uh, I'm happy to answer that. Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, good. Thank you. Um, it's Craig here. Um, so our, in, what we are doing at the moment so is that between Athena, who's right legal counsel, uh, Michael and I, we are putting the first draft of the SLA together. Um, we have split the document uh, into various clauses according to the CRISP proposal under the heading of the uh, various 
heading uh, under the headings of the various subject matters, um, and we are splitting that between the three of us. So we're putting the document together. I think we're just miss missing about three clauses now out of the about 12 clauses that are in the agreement. Um, and the idea is that as soon as we've got that uh, in a position that we're happy with, then we would get um, the, the various RIR heads to approve uh, and uh, to that, the version to be released to the public. So um, I think in terms of timeline, we're probably, I don't know, I'm not sure when the NRO meeting is, um, but I'm hoping that within the next few weeks we will have something to release to the community. And the intention is that the document will fully and accurately reflect the CRIS proposal. I see a hand from Milani. Thank you. Um, I, that's great. Thank you very much for that update, Craig. Um, I think it would be useful if we could um, agree on a timeline uh, for the draft SLA and the review committee that we can go out with and announce to, to our communities so that they know uh, when they can expect this and, and uh, we also then know when to uh, go out and consult our communities. Uh, uh, about it, um, I don't need. To, uh, we don't need to set that timeline here and now, but I think it would be good to um, agree with one. Agree on one that we can go out with. Thanks. Hey, look, I don't think it's appropriate for Chris to be setting the timeline, but I, I mean, I, I fully understand the need for it. I think it's what's what's appropriate is for us uh, in the RIRs to give an indication to the Chris. Team as to when to expect that document um, because you know the whole the process is that it is now with the RIRs to draft and it is a pretty complicated um, and big document to to get through. Um, but what I can say is that um, you know I'm hoping that in the next couple of weeks we will have something to submit to the RIR CEO um, CEOs for the consideration. Thanks, uh, Craig. Um, Andre. Uh, thank you, Zumi. I think I'm a little bit confused, and you have to excuse me. I think my confusion stems from um, the item 3D, future steps. Uh, uh, quite frankly, it's not completely clear to me what the role of the CRISP team in the whole process of SLAs and review committee. Um, I think it would be great if we can have a kind of written some text, so there is clarity about what is expected from the CRISP team. Uh, it was very clear when we developed the proposal and the scope of our work was very clear and very well determined. And I think that helped our work. And I think it's crucial here as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andre. Um, I actually wanted to raise this, so uh, I put this on agenda uh, 6 B, um, community engagement, engagement with um, RIR. So um, let's uh, discuss this, but before we go, uh, let's go to Bill first. I just wanted to say partly in response to Craig and I think uh, a little bit uh, following on Andre as well, that my my concern with the transparency, um, I, I recognize that when people need to sit down across from each other at a table and hammer out a, a document and there are opposing views that have to be accommodated through compromise and so forth, that um, it's a lot easier to do that in a closed room, behind closed doors, in private, and so forth. Um, but I'm not sure that that's how the best results are achieved. And I think we've achieved really, really good results through fairly radical transparency in this process, right? Everyone knowing that they're responsible to the community for everything they say uh, in this process. And if we're able to drive in that direction uh, through the remainder of the process, through the, the SLA negotiation and contracting and so forth, I think it would be very much to the community's benefit, very much to, you know, number of resource users' benefit and so forth. Um, and so, it, well, I think the biggest part of our work has been done, I think 
we do represent sort of the voice of the community in oversight of the rest of the process. And I think that might might not have been very explicitly said, or that might be an interpretation that I'm coming to now or something, but I do feel like we have a, a responsibility to make sure that this whole process doesn't sort of go off into the shadows and come back in unrecognizable form. Thank you very much, Bill. Um, I actually want to do some uh, wrap up and things to say, but let's go to Paul and afterwards to Craig, and then I also want to speak. Thank you, Izumi. Actually, I very much share the points that 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 Bill has put up. This is thank you again. Again, it's been taken out uh, out of my, my my mouth before I could put my hand in there. I, I very much agree with Bill here. I think I can imagine it's it's very difficult and it takes quite some time to to draft these these SLAs. But the faster these are done and the more transparent they are done, uh, the better I think this will be uh, accepted inside the communities. The clock is ticking. We have all the, the various uh, RIR meetings that are coming up uh, within the next, I would say, month and a half. We will probably cover the bulk, the bulk of the rest of them. APNIC is, is through their process, but the rest of us are still there. And if I look at it from the, from the right perspective, I certainly don't think that our community would expect to have any kind of hands-on uh, input into how these SLAs are drafted, but they certainly will want to take a look at the SLAs to make sure that the principles that they have brought forward are upheld. So I agree with Bill full-heartedly here that the more transparent and maybe the faster we can, we can get these get these out and, and, and let them be seen, the better off we'll be within this process. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. I um, totally agree with Bill and Paul. Uh, let's go to Craig. Um, thank you. Um, I hear what's been said, um, but I hope people acknowledge that this is a big document that is pretty fundamental. Um, and it takes time to draft, and we are actually drafting it very carefully and faithfully uh, to the Chris proposal. Um, it is not something that we would like to release half-baked. It's a, it's a pretty big document. It's a pretty good document. Um, and when we release it, it will be faithful to the, to the uh, Chris proposal. I do want to make a point in relation to this transparency issue. Um, to put people's mind at ease, um, there are no backroom discussions taking place at the moment, to my knowledge. Um, and even if there were, um, there will be no document that's produced by the RIRs which will be different from the CRIS proposal. I hope that I hope that gives people some comfort and confidence that whatever document that's going to be produced will be totally consistent with the CRIS proposal. If there's going to be any changes to it, um, because um, you know, NTAA has made public statements as to their requirements, then those will be put back to the CRIS community to, uh, to, for discussions. Uh, and there will be no unilateral steps taken by RIRs to alter the CRIS proposal without consultation. Thank you, um, Craig. I understand about this, um, about this, um, um, being careful and you want to be fast, but then also want to make sure that we have uh, something good in place and also good to to have uh, a clear confirmation that there's no um, nothing just being discussed like uh, behind and what will be um, released out is expected to be consistent with the principles. Um, so let me just uh, share my view on how to move forward and our role related to this. Um, we still haven't uh, released um, to the community the, the expected future steps, so, which is action on um, 3D. And so I think uh, the next step related to this is that we wait for um, what will be uh, posted on the NLO website about the current status of uh, our preparation on implementation and a summary on the, each of the RIR meeting discussions related to this. And then, uh, once this is out, then um, 
each of the Chris team members from the region will, will share um, share this uh, this information that will be released uh, from the NLO to the respective region, and then we also share on the global list, which um, either myself or on Rani could do this. And then we also make it to clear what was agreed in the last APNIC meeting about the future steps, which was that um, in each of the RIR face-to-face -face meeting, we share the, the, the latest uh, implementation status on our preparation for the SLA and the review committee. So it doesn't have to be complete, or maybe like uh, depending on the situation, the details of the SLA text might not be or, or be able to share. But at least I think it's important we share that this is in preparation, and we are able to share the the expected timeline. As in we, um, this will be like the RIRs will be the will be able to share the expected. Uh, Timeline at the at that point on um, when they are a, they may be able to uh, publish uh, the SLA uh, draft text and um, if there's any um, expected timeline related to review committee it would be good to be able to share so that um, any community member who's uh, interested uh, to to follow and give input uh, if necessary they they can um, can do this. So that's uh, my first point. And then um, regarding Andre's uh, question, what is the role of the CRIS team um, in, in the current uh, phase? Um, my understanding is to, in, when there are any consultation in each of the RIR meetings related to um, the implementation, for example, if there's like um, any feedback in the community related to the SLA or the review committee. Um, I think that there was a request from the NROEC. We report to uh, each of the um, the CRIS team from that region where this uh, gets discussed. Uh, prepare the report to the NROEC um, what was discussed and whether this was um, in line with um, the the contents of the CRIS team proposal. I think that was uh, something that was suggested by NR or EC. So I think that could be one more that the Chris team um, could take. I recall we, we did confirm we, if, whether we're comfortable with this at the last call, and uh, nobody um, expressed objection to this. The second role that we could uh, take is to confirm with the RIR the, the latest uh, status of uh, implementation regularly and make sure that uh, this is being uh, shared at each major uh, point of the timeline. I think um, we, we can uh, consider the face-to-face -face RIR meeting as a key point and any additional points in time that we think may be useful to, to share the latest uh, status. So if the RIRs are not uh, are sharing the status of the implementation preparation, we can actually confirm with the um, RIR about this. Um, so that's my um, observation about the possible role of the first team. And if people agree that this makes sense, I think it would also be useful to confirm where who would be the, the POC from the RIR when we want to um, communicate uh, such things. So do people have uh, comments? I see a hand from um, Andre. So Andre. Well, thank you, Zumi, for this explanation. I think it makes it clearer. But I still think there are a lot of nuances um, that just, you know, uh, I mean, what, what you described it can range from a purely, you know, communication like conduit between the uh, community and the the areas, the, the NRO, uh, to advisory role, to some decision-making role even, if we want to make sure that the implementation is conformant to um, community and our understanding of the proposed principles. So I think there, there are a lot of nuances and uh, would be good, as I said, to uh, document this role and uh, agree among ourselves, of course, that we are happy and comfortable with the scope and with the NRO and, well, maybe with the community as well. Excellent point, Andre. So um, 
maybe I'll uh, first address this uh, with uh, Nurani's help if uh, she she can um, she is able to help me with this. Circulate this within the Chris team and then um, confirm with the NRO. And I think it's very important that uh, we also share this with the community so that um, um, the community is aware of what to expect as the Chris team role. And then related to this. I think I, I really want to go back to Action 3E um, to confirm also with the NRO about the fact that RIRs acknowledge this uh, Christian proposal, willing to work or based on um, willing to work on the implementation based on this, and then also on um, the the um, the future steps because actually this is the part as Craig has said uh, the future steps from the implementation part is the part that RIRs are taking the initiative. It's not the Chris team. So we actually maybe do like a, a kind of like a confirmation on the status uh, and make sure that the information will be out to the shared out to the community. But actually the, this part of the initiative is the, is the RIRs uh, should be taking the lead. So um, I do want to uh, um, again double check uh, with uh, her man. I, I'm sure that uh, he, he's doing this, but uh, that uh, he consults the NRO that um, about whether they're happy to to release a kind of uh, official statement. And we do hope to see this uh, to be shared uh, from the RIR, well, the NRO to the community. And uh, thank you, Nirani, for expressing um, that you're willing to have, uh, help me on this, on drafting this. Does uh, anybody else have any other comments related to this point? Nirani. Thank you, Simi. Um, just a very quick comment, and I think uh, it's a comment re in relation to um, 3E, but also then um, uh, 6A, I guess. Um, I think the important part here is actually that we need to be um, um, very clear when we communicate with the community about what the next steps are, when they can expect the next steps to be taken, and what the roles of, I think, not only the RIRs and the CRISP team, but even the community um, are. Um, if it's a matter of uh, clarity and it's a matter of transparency, uh, and I think um, it is our role as the CRISP team to to lead that process and to to be able to communicate that to the community, uh, so that when the draft proposal uh, comes out, is uh, the community knows what is expected of them, so to speak. That. Uh, we are not, for example, opening up some of these principles, uh, um, but we are confirming that uh, the text actually represents uh, what we agreed on, what uh, the principles say in the proposal, et cetera. And same with when it comes to the um, uh, review committee. Uh, so I think that part of transparency is incredibly important. I, and I agree with Bill Woodcock. Uh, points there that transparency can only help us in, in this process. Thanks. Excellent point, Nirani. So uh, um, we're quite uh, short in time before the um, RN meeting, but um, we it might be uh, desirable to target to have this announcement uh, ready um, before the RN meeting. So uh, maybe the part that um, will need some any kind of confirmation with NROEC. That might have to uh, wait. But I think we can actually say what we expect uh, from the community. Um, so uh, let's work on this and we'll, we'll circulate this. Um, maybe um, we'll try to circulate this um, by the close of business Thursday and um, receive the team feedback on Friday. And hopefully we can have this uh, out. On Monday uh, morning, um, Aaron, um, Aaron region time, um, so that people can see this before you have the session on the IANA. Does anybody have any comments um, on this? I'm not seeing any hands. And then, um, thank you, um, all and people supporting this. And. Regarding the transparency um, point that um, 
So has ways. I think this uh, covers this, this approach covers uh, many things. But I also want to to um, especially highlight what was um, discussed in AP 39 that we actually made a clear statement. I, I made a clear statement that if people want to have any um, input about a proposal, that people think that any part of the a proposal should be changed. For example, like. Uh, um, the part, especially the part that uh, we're saying that we allow the um, our option to be able to change the IANA um, operator in the future from ICANN if possible, then um, this should be openly uh, communicated to us uh, in a transparent manner. Um, and I think this is another point that we really want to to be clear and emphasize. So maybe we can um, incorporate this uh, in the statement that we uh, re release on what we expect uh, for the community, not just the numbers community, but the um, anybody who's um, involved in this uh, process. So um, if uh, people don't have additional comments on six. B. Uh, let's uh, continue um, with uh, with the rest of the agenda. And actually, we, we moved a little bit. We jumped a little bit on the agenda. So we were actually in the middle of uh, 4B and uh, confirming if there are any um, developments in the RIR communities in addition to Aaron. Um, so, if there are any no hands raised on the chat related to this, I would assume that. Um, there are no updates from uh, other RIR regions. Um, hello, uh, this Andres? Is Andres. Yes, Andres. Yes, hello. Uh, thank you, Sumi. I, I'm just uh, trying to. I, what I was, I want to say from the LACNIC uh, side is that LACNIC will have a, a workshop, a panel on uh, the LACNIC meeting uh, in Lima next month uh, regarding the community discussion uh, on the IANA stewardship transition. We will certainly um, talk about the outcome of CRISP and how to implement this and the SLA and the review committee. But uh, the structure of this workshop is not uh, yet confirmed. So once uh, when we have this structure, I will share with you guys. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andres, for this uh, sharing this. So I think in the uh, announcements that we will be making uh, to the community, it might be useful to, to sh like uh, share the future um, RIR meetings that will discuss the uh, um, the this um, IANA um, stewardship transition uh, topic, uh, so that the community can you know put, uh, you know have their head and hey this will be discussed at this point and ha um, have themselves ready. Um, so maybe people can, um, from each of the RIR regions, can share their schedule. Um, but we can just see on the calendar and double check with um, the Chris team members. Um, and thank you, Bill, for raising that if um, people from other regions have anything um, that we want to, to uh, input on the Aaron region, our uh, Aaron region meeting on the IANA Australia Chief Transition, then email our Bill and um, others in the Aaron region. So thank you, Bill, for bringing up. So um, any other points related to 4B? Nope. And I see that uh, we have five minutes left uh, for for um, the time. And I'd like to confirm with others if we'd like to, um, we can extend the time uh, for additional, um, I would say, 20 minutes um, to cover the rest of the agenda. Okay, to extend. Okay, so perhaps some of um, us might have to leave, but um, so we'll, we'll continue um, as much as possible. So uh, let's go to 4C. Um, so the update on the um, the CWG stewardship uh, co-chairs and the IETF about our request that in our names uh, group or uh, share any um, of the discussions related to um, the things that would affect the numbers community. And as I uh, reported to the Chris team list, um, the chairs, the co-chairs have responded. They, they have offered to have a 
a meeting uh, with um, with uh, myself and the vice chair who, uh, who will be Nurani to, and they'll give us the update. Um, they're happy to give us an update on the major developments and any questions that we have. And I think I shared the things to note of all this meeting, and I see people have generally agreed. I see a hand up from Bill. Yeah, just really quickly on the names, um, on, on the topic of the names, folks. Since they're the ones who are not uh, sort of with the schedule right now, uh, and they're hung up on this question of ICANN accountability and whether that has to be resolved first before they can finish. Um, whereas if you talk to the ICANN folks, the ICANN folks say that's a separate working track in parallel with this one, and it would be foolish to couple the two together. Um, can can we just sort of get a sense of the people in the Chris uh, team here? how much sympathy people have with each of those two positions. I'm, I'm just trying to sort of understand whether people feel like the names community is sort of um, uh, okay in, in what they're doing or whether this is um, uh, holding everything up and we're more of the opinion that um, the parallel process should be uncoupled. Just kind of a question for the group. Uh, but by parallel process, so uh, um, what do you mean, Bill? Um, I didn't quite understand what you mean by parallel process. So, so, so there is a parallel track to ours on ICANN transparency and accountability, right? So they're running along, working on this question of how ICANN can be made more transparent and accountable, and. Um, we and the IETF uh, did not really raise this as an issue in our work, right? We we provided what we said we were going to provide on deadline, right? Um, the names group is hung up on this question of whether they can't meet their – well, they didn't meet their deadline, and they said that was because um, they were hung up on waiting for the output of the – uh, accountability and transparency process, um, and who knows when that'll finish. So, you know that that's kind of it, it, obviously, you know, I'm I'm betraying my personal position, which is that we did the right thing, and you know, the the parallel we should trust that the parallel group will do their thing, and we shouldn't couple these together, and that's why we were able to make our deadline. But it, if but I also get that, you know, what I individually think is not a big deal. What I do care about is what the rest of you think. And if if I am not um, representative of the majority there, I would really like to know so that I can uh, sort of temper what I say. Okay. Um, understood. Um, so uh, let's go to um, Alan and, um, yeah. Okay, Alan. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's a complicated issue. Um, I am somewhat sympathetic to the names community because, um, you know, they're, they're looking for a way to, to deal with a future in which the NTA is not there to provide accountability. So they want some other way to provide accountability. I'm sympathetic to the idea that uh, they have to um, deal with that before they can produce any output. Um, the difference is between their situation and ours is that um, we can treat ICANN as a black box and say we'll contract with it and if we don't like it later we'll cancel the contract. Names can't really do that. Names is, is part of ICANN. They can't treat it as a black box. So I am sympathetic to their um, idea of trying to solve the accountability problem. Um, however, I think they're taking too long. So it's a complicated issue. Okay. Well, I see a hand from Paul. Um, so 
So I'd like to go to Paul, but I'm not sure how much of uh, the discussions we want to to um, uh, make related to this because this is about the names, and I, I do want to focus more on what we want to do related to the numbers. So let's go to Paul, and if people have thoughts about this, maybe people can express on the chat and continue discussions on the mailing list. So let's go to Paul. Actually, I'm I'm very happy that Bill raised this question because. Um, and, and you're right, Izumi, we need to concentrate on the number side. But unfortunately, I think that, that currently, uh, I don't even have a better word for it, I think we're trapped in the numbers game uh, moving forward up until they will submit something uh, that can then be submitted uh, to the ICG, because as we all know, of course, the IETF and the, the numbers folks have made their submissions. So we're all really standing waiting for what's happening with the names. And uh, oof, although, yes, I want to concentrate on what the numbers are doing, Izumi, at the same time, in respect to Bill's question, I also wonder what if I had to turn around and, 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 and bring this forward to, to the right community, uh, what am I going to bring forward? I mean, we've, we've done everything in our process, so frankly, uh, it looks a little bit like we're stuck within what, what, what game the numbers have to play. I can understand Alan's point that, yes, this is very, very, this is very complex uh, for the names uh, community, and I'm sure they're working very hard to resolve this. But frankly, I, you know, I, I don't know if I'm comfortable enough with what I see in, 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 in the deliverables that are coming from the, uh, from the names community how that will reflect on, on something we have to do, uh, regardless of whether it's CRISP or not, but we will have to be, the CRISP team will have to be part of this in some way, right, within this process. What are our steps? What, what are we gonna bring forward? How are we gonna bring this to the community when, you know, if and when we see that, you know, time is ticking and running out and, and we need to do something? Okay, um, I, I see a point, Paul, and I see a suggestion from uh, Bill saying that maybe we could make a statement, a public statement, that accountability issue is either addressed or being addressed, and um, it's not justification blockage in the named process. Um, so maybe this is something that um, um, myself and Rani can um, bring this up um, when we t uh, discuss with the um, the names um, co-chairs. I mean, I don't think uh, we want to to um, sound as though we, we're stepping into, you know, their their things. But um, yeah, I think we, we can um, confirm whether it is true that our assumption that um, the accountability discussions is being the um, the blocking factor for this and. Um, and then if that is the case, then um, we can share our situation as a reference and, and the fact that um, discussions can be made in parallel. Um, but um, looking at things from, from my side, I think um, they have actually, um, um, the accountability part have already shared the things that will be worked on, the issues that they, they will be working on. And so I think the, the names group can is should be ready to be able to to consider um, their issues based on what they expect the accountability group to be working on. So I, I wouldn't think that um, this will be any of a blocking um, reason for the process. So I see hand from Nirwani. Um. Thank you. Uh, I think I'm, I'm also um, slightly skeptical of, of such a statement, but mostly because it's not um, clear to me what we want to achieve. I understand the the, um, the problem described, and, and as Alan has said, um, the accountability issues in the names community is very different to the accountability uh, issues or challenges uh, that we're trying to solve in. Um, uh, in the name, uh, the, sorry, the numbers community or, or even the protocol community for, for that matter. Um, just as a, um, uh, as a way of trying to explain uh, the discussion we had at the last telephone conference, 
uh, we are all aware of that there might be things happening in the names community that may eventually affect the whole process and that that includes the numbers community. I don't think it is, uh, when we talked a bit about this uh, last time, um, I think we agree that it is not our role to try to go in and change uh, the discussions or sway the discussions in any direction in the names community. Uh, <clears throat> however, um, if there are proposals on the table in the names community that rewrites the whole structure or that uh, affects the, uh, the numbers community, we want them to communicate that with us. Um, and I can see I can see a lot of different scenarios, um, um, but I'm not sure if we can um, predict or or, or um, prevent uh, any of those scenarios at this point. Um, I think we need to be clear about um, the boundaries between the, the communities and that um, it is not up to the names community to solve accountability issues for the numbers community. But I think it's a little bit premature to come up with a statement of such. Thank you, Nirani. I'm in total agreement with you. And that's why I thought that rather than making a statement, um, Maybe we just like share things from our side as a reference, and um, and I I, um, I do want to focus more on when when we actually uh, meet with the names co-chairs um, that we we discuss about the things that affect the numbers community. So uh, from what I observe, I think um, their discussions um, related to the IANA common IANA board between the operational community. So what's the um, status of consideration related to this. And I see a group that is um, going to be discussing about the intellectual property rights, rights issue. And um, um, so, so so these things like this. So, um, and then anything else that could be affecting the numbers community as a part of their consideration, uh, we should uh, request the co-chairs to, to share this. And likewise, from our side as well, um, I think we want to share, re reiterate our consideration for the IPR and the current status, as well as the fact that we're actually thinking of uh, the option of changing the IANA operator. If I can, um, um, this, this is an option that, uh, that we actually are thinking so that they actually know that uh, um, this is something that we're thinking, and I think these are the kind of discussions that would be, um, be useful um, when we uh, meet up with the names co-chair. And from Alan. Uh, thanks, Izumi. Um, so I, I don't think it's a good idea for us to make any sort of public statement along the lines of, oh, we think the names community is being too slow and we don't think there's a good reason for that. Um, I, I think a public statement like that would not be helpful. Um, I think we should be talking to the people in the names community as we are doing. And if anybody is going to tell them to hurry up, it shouldn't be us. It could be maybe the NTIA or the ICG, but certainly not us. Exactly. I, I totally agree with you, um, Alan. So, um, so to um, to do a recap on what we'll be discussing with the um, names uh, co-chairs um, is that uh, so we confirm with them um, the considerations they're making that affects the numbers community, and um, so we might um, share some of the examples that of the things that we're observing, and then request them to share anything else that they see from their side. And we also share like the things that we think it might be affecting the the other um, operational communities, including the names. And I think I do want to highlight on the IPR issue, not just uh, not just on uh, the concept of our proposal, but the fact that uh, we actually um, think that um, the communication may be necessary among the different operational communities to to agree on this and how we can um, how we can do this and. I think this kind of agenda would be a useful. 
So um, as a next step, I would like to suggest that uh, um, me and Nurani would work on the agenda for discussions with the NAMES co-chairs. We will share with the Chris team and then uh, hear your input. And then we suggest this to the NAMES co-chair with the um, with the, uh, the the candidates of the dates to have this uh, meeting with them. Does this sound reasonable as the next step? Okay, if um, I'm not seeing any objection, um, let's uh, move in this direction. And just a really quick uh, update um, on the IETF community related to this. So as agreed on the last team call, um, I, sh I shared this, what we're doing with the IETF, and then I did get an, an input, positive input from um, Yari, the, and then um, they, they want to consider doing something similar. But uh, I'm not uh, hearing uh, further updates from their side. And I did, um, again, uh, update them that we'll be talking to the, the names co-chairs. But um, I'm not really um, hearing further updates uh, or ITF are doing anything related to this. So I think it's up to them. And um, so we'll just uh, go ahead with, uh, with our plan, regardless of ITF who are interested in joining us or not. And um, Alan, I, I think that you have um, sent this uh, message to the ICG that we'll be doing this. Um, did you hear any feedback uh, related to this uh, from anybody from the ICG? Um, yes, there was one message. I forget who it was from, um, saying that it seemed like a good idea for the chairs of the two communities to be talking. Okay, but uh, very little feedback, just that one message that I recall. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, so I guess there's nothing uh, controversial and people basically agree. So um, I think uh, we're, we're good with uh, 4C and let's go to uh, 4D, uh, which is the request from the government uh, account of, uh, U.S. Government Accountability Office. And uh, as I shared on the first key list, this request is uh, made to all these other key uh, co-chairs um, and um, organizations um, that is involved in the accountability. And I think this is to, to help them uh, gather the report uh, um, to to the commission, and it's a good thing. So um, unless people have concerns, um, I would like to uh, respond with them with a formal yes, um, and I would like to have Nurani join me in the call. The questions are being circulated, so I'd like to um, to draft the, uh, the answers to the questions uh, with Nurani again. I'll circulate this to the first team list before the in of uh, the interview. And then um, we'll certainly uh, share how the interview went with the first team. So uh, does anybody have any um, concerns related to this uh, and any additional suggestions that we should be making um, to um, get our hand from Paul? Uh, yes, Izumi, I just wanted to uh, make a statement here like uh, on behalf of our, the Bright NCC, I see that you know, you're putting a lot of uh, focus on efforts that you and Narani are going to be uh, drafting or what have you. I just wanted to extend that if you would like the support of the Bright NCC, then by all means, I hope that you and Narani would, would call on us. And I'm, I'm, I can't speak for the other RERs, but I, I can say that we would be more than willing to help draft any of the pieces that you need to have. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And uh, certainly open to offer for help from um, anybody from the Chris team or any of the RIRs. Um, thank you very much. So um, let's go to um, the next point on the agenda. And um, thank you, Michael, also for um, expressing that Erin will be able to um, help as well. Uh, wonderful. Excellent. So let's go to, um, we've covered um, 6A and 6B. So uh, let's go to 6C, um, the intellectual property rights related issue. We, we discussed um, this uh, in the last uh, call uh, about the point that was raised from 
Um, I think I believe Greg Shatton uh, from the Namespots Committee group about uh, his concerns related to um, to our proposal on the IPR, and it would be good that we we actually uh, confirm the latest status with the names co chair. And in addition, um, I think we actually mentioned that um, any one of the concerns raised from Greg was whether the IETF is uh, willing to the, the IETF trust is willing to. Uh, Take the, uh, the obligations, the responsibilities that come with the, the intellectual property rights. So it might be good to follow up with the IETF folks uh, on, on, on this and, uh, and uh, re reconfirm whether the, I, um, um, the IETF trust is willing to take those responsibilities so that they, they make the necessary con um, on considerations, and in case that they feel that after you know they see these obligations, they're no longer willing to take the responsibility, it might be uh, worth um, for them to express this at early stage. So uh, I would like to engage with the IETF uh, folks so uh, that this is up on the uh, table and uh, something for the IETF to to consider, IT, the IETF trust to consider. Um, does anybody have any concerns or comments related to this uh, suggested approach? Uh, thank you, Andre, for sharing that um, uh, ITF Trust will be willing to hold intellectual property rights related to the IANA function, including the IANA trademark uh, and the IANA.org um, hat from Andre. Yes, this is uh, uh, this is to clarify the question. So um, the IETF trust issued the statement. So the trustees on the 19th of February they voted they voted on this statement. And uh, what you are, uh, what we are planning to ask or reconfirm not now is it something different or is it just reconfirming the same statement that they voted on? Um, to confirm that um, there has been a, a comment raised. That there are some obligations um, associated uh, with the um, with um, having this uh, intellectual property right, and this has been shared by Greg Shatton uh, from the Names uh, Cross Community Group, and I think he he actually uh, put uh, the details on what those obligations are. I think it's worth sharing with the IETF Trust uh, um, that this has been raised, and then. Um, um, so these are the obligations that will be uh, will come with uh, those intellectual property rights, and whether they would like to um, um, to still um, be willing to to accept holding these um, these uh, intellectual property rights, even with those obligations. I see hand from Alan. Uh, thanks. Um, so the IETF Trust did indeed issue this statement back in February that, that they'd be willing to hold the IPR, um, but they did that before we received the message from uh, Greg Shatton. And uh, so I would assume that the IETF Trust um, would have legal advice and that they would have considered these things even if Greg Shatton had not brought it to their attention. But it may be worth just reconfirming with them that, you know, we, we've been made aware of these possible problems. Did you consider them? And um, I don't think we need to ask that formally, but we could informally um, pass that message on to the, the IETF Trust. Yes, exactly. That's the idea. So I think we can um, pass this message to the um, the, um, the ICG um, our members are representing the the IETF and the IEB and um, just just forwarding the information for their consideration. I think that will be sufficient, and I'm sure they'll like uh, make necessary additional considerations if needed. Yeah, so I think um, so that that was the idea, and uh, good to see Andre agree with this. Um, so um, if um, no other comments on this agenda, I think we've covered um, agenda up to uh, agenda item number six. So the ne the last on the agenda, the next meeting. Um, so we agreed at the last call that we have um, we, we try to have um, meeting twice a month. Um, 
So, um, and then I think um, we requested the uh, Haman to have a, a Drupal on or figure out what would be the best uh, um, way to have meeting twice a month to have a placeholder. Maybe like a agree, for example, every first um, Wednesday of the month and uh, the last Wednesday of the month. Or, I mean, this is just one example. I think we can just um, do this um, online. Um, and uh, can, um, do the Google poll on, um, on what fits the uh, best for everybody. And then I think it will be good to have some like regularity on um, just not just random or uh, twice a month, but uh, so that people can expect, okay, I should uh, keep this schedule for the crisp um, so that we have like a, um, like a, as I said, like every certain day of the month that we have the crisp poll. So I would like to leave this to um, Haman in coordinating this, and um, and I'd like to um, have the next uh, Chris team meeting planned um, not too late um, after the Aaron meeting, so that we can hear the update from Aaron meeting and any other actions to follow up. So may I leave this uh, to you, Haman, in coordinating the schedule? Sure, no problem. Thank you very much. So. Um, Unless uh, anybody else have any other comments to raise, I think we've covered all the points on the agenda. And um, I do, on the agenda, um, does anybody else have, want to raise uh, comments related to um, like um, the concrete uh, like agenda? And from uh, Paul. Maybe this is an old hand. Um, and then lastly, uh, I really want to um, thank um, Alan for all the contributions uh, and the time that he has given to the um, Chris team. Um, and I think it's been wonderful working with um, Alan. Um, we will miss you very much, but uh, I'm sure we'll be continuing to engage with you uh, as an ICG member and, of course, as the, um, the um, NROEC. So um, I'd like to congratulate Alan um, in the new um, role as the CEO of Afrinic. Um, and uh, um, a big thanks uh, for the, all the contributions that you've made. Uh, thank you, Izumi. Um, I formally take up my position at Afrinic about 10 days from now. And um, uh, I'm afraid I was not on this call at the time that you held the, the vice chair election. Um, so it, it was my intention to resign as vice chair when you held the election, but I missed that opportunity. So um, I, I resign as vice chair right now with immediate effect. So of course, Narani can take over. Um, I'll remain on the Chris team for another few days, um, and then I'll be leaving that as well. So yeah, it's been great working with you all, and uh, we'll see you again even though I'm not on the Chris team. Mm -hmm. Yep. So thanks so much. And um, and I'm seeing so many comments for Alan. And um, so we'll, we'll still be engaged and then I'll get to uh, confirm that you'll be on, on the Chris team mailing list for another couple of days. So it's not going to be a sudden switch. So thank you all so much for your time and apologies for the extension, but I think it was good that we covered all the agenda. So thanks all, and we'll talk again. Bye for now. Thanks, everyone. Good speaking to you all. Bye. Everyone.